Okay, so we are going to meet now more expressive uh, acceptance conditions, Rabin street and parity. Before we do that, let's see uh, where we stand in terms of expressive power. So this is the, the picture uh, of the world we have so far. So here we have all the languages of infinite words. We know that inside them, we have the omega regular languages. These recognized by NBW. So this is, these are all the omega regular languages. Inside, we have these recognized by deterministic book keyword automata. It's a strict subset. We also have deterministic co-booky word automata, which complement them. And this is the picture. I mean, for, for example, uh, here uh, we saw yes, a, a language that is in uh, DBW and not in DCW. So let's do it. Yeah, so the, the blue language here is, for example, uh, infinitely many zeros. I always write infinitely many zeros, right? I can also be formal and write an omega regular expression. We didn't define them, but there are omega regular expression. The complementary one here of not infinitely many zeros. So now if I write an omega regular language, uh, an, an omega regular expression, I want to see an infinite tail of ones. There are also languages in the intersection. Uh, yeah, I can write all, all languages of words starting with zero. This is easy. And it can be recognized both by a deterministic booky and a deterministic co-booky word automaton. And booky and co-booky together do not cover everything. So what I can write, for example, here. So the usual thing to do when we have two, two subsets, I can take something I can write uh, infinitely many zero and not infinitely many ones, but to be on the safe side, let's take the alphabet to be zero, one, and two. So this is a language I cannot recognize by neither a deterministic booky nor a deterministic co-booky or automaton. And now the conditions we will meet now uh, will be such that the deterministic variant, so deterministic gamma, a uh, word automata for gamma being grab in street or parity uh, will be able to recognize all omega regular languages. It will be as expressive as non-deterministic booky word automata, which also means that uh, there will be a determinization construction. I will be able to take a non-deterministic booky word automaton and translate it to a deterministic grab in street or parity automaton. So this is our plan and let's meet these constructions, these conditions. Uh, let's start with Rabin. Uh, uh, Rabin condition, so alpha is now going to be a set of pairs. Uh, each pair has a left set and a right set. So L1, R1, L2, R2, up to LK, RK. This K is often referred to as the index of the acceptance condition, how many pairs I have. And the index uh, of alpha, it will also play a role in uh, all kinds of complexity analysis. Uh, and these I, Li and Ri, they are subsets of Q. Yeah, so if you want uh, to be cryptic, you can say that uh, alpha is a member of two to the two to the Q times two to the Q, but we don't want to be cryptic. So the, this is our formalism. And when is a run accepting? So R is accepting if intuitively there is a pair such that I visit Li infinitely often and visit Ri only finitely often. So if and only if there exists I between one to K, a pair, such that inf of R, its intersection with Li is not empty. So I visit the L guys infinitely often, but inf of R, its intersection with Ri is empty. I visit R, the bad ones, only finitely often. So this is acceptance by Rabin. Let's see an example and we can take our usual structure. Okay, so whenever I see 
uh, one, I go to S1. Whenever I see zero, I go to S0. And let's say that this is accepting. And suppose I want on top of this structure to define an automaton for all words with infinitely many ones, then what I will say, I will have a single pair. I want to visit S1 infinitely often. And I don't care about not visiting states. So this condition alpha one uh, will give me the language of all words with infinitely many ones, right? Because a run is accepting if and only if there is a pair, here we have a single pair, such that I visit the left set S1 uh, infinitely often and the right only finitely often, right? If the, the thing that is written here, yes, yeah, so we have infinitely many visits in Li and not infinitely many visits in Ri. And in fact, you can see, I hope already from this example that for every bookie, if I have a bookie condition alpha and I want to translate it to Rabin, I will need a single pair. And they will say that I want to visit alpha infinitely often and don't care, empty set. I mean, this is going to be satisfied vacuously. In so far, the intersection with empty set is going to be uh, empty. So this is one thing I can do with this structure. What if I want only finitely many ones? I want to visit S1 only finitely often. So I will define a Rabin condition that makes sure I visit S1 only finitely often. I don't want to restrict the left side. So I will say that my inf, its intersection with S0, S1 is not empty, but its intersection with S1 has to be empty. And uh, it's not hard to see that states that are both in L and R are redundant. I can remove them from, from where? From L, right? Because I'm not going uh, to see S1 infinitely often anyway. I have this condition. So if I define alpha two like that, it means that I want to see S1 only finitely often, and then the language will be only finitely many ones. Okay, so uh, this is in fact how I can do any co-bookie condition. Alpha, how I will say it in Rabin, I want to visit alpha only finitely often. So I will say that there is a pair, a single pair, such that I visit all states infinitely often. So this is going to be satisfied always, but I visit alpha only finitely often and what we did here, erasing the S1, is like saying that, okay, here I don't really need all Q, it can be Q minus alpha. This is equivalent. Okay, so Rabin is at least as strong as Buki and Kobuki. Stronger, because we already have an example uh, of languages that can be recognized by uh, Rabin and cannot be recognized by Buki and Kobuki. So this is, a Rabin, and the second condition we will see dualizes Rabin. So it looks the same, it is called street, street condition. And street is dual to Rabin, the same way Kobuki dualizes Buki, street uh, dual lies Rabin. So it looks the same, alpha is still a set of pairs. So L1, R1, up to LK, RK. But now what happens when we dualize exists pair, we will say that for all, so R is accepting, it satisfies the condition, if and only if, now it will be for all pairs between one to K, either I visit L1 only finitely often or I visit R1 infinitely often. So inf of R, its intersection with Li is empty or inf of R, its intersection with Ri is not empty. I'm not sure I wrote end here, here there was an end. Okay. 
So we dualize this, it was exist i such that infinitely many L i and only finitely many R i. So now I need for all i uh, only finitely many L i or infinitely many R i. So I can write it like that. So it's uh, not infinitely uh, L i or infinitely R i. Alternatively, I can say that infinitely many L i imply <coughs> infinitely many are. So it's exactly the dual to Rabin. And if we uh, take our <clears throat> example, let's use the technology here. I can uh, copy uh, this automaton. And now we will reason about it uh, as a street automaton. So as a street automaton, if I want to define infinitely many uh, ones, yes, I want to visit S1 infinity often, I will have a single pair. How to say with street that I want to visit S1 infinity often? I will say that if I visit all states infinity often, which happens for sure, then I want to also visit S1 infinity often. So this is how I will get an automaton for infinitely many ones. And in general, if I have bookie alpha and want to say it in street, I will need a single pair that says, if you visit Q infinitely often, then visit alpha only finitely often. Dualizing this, if we have a Kobuki condition, I want to see alpha only finitely often. So what will I say? I will say that if you visit alpha infinitely often, then <coughs> you are in trouble because then you have to visit also the empty set infinitely often, but this wouldn't happen. So uh, this is how street is stronger than uh, Buki and Kobuki. And you are welcome to, to stay on it and see also how these conditions we got here dualize the conditions we got when we translated Buki and Kobuki to Rabin. So we have Rabin condition and street condition and the third condition, perhaps before we continue, let's just say that uh, on this structure, if I uh, use the street condition and I want to say uh, infinitely many zero and infinitely many ones, I can do it too. I can do it with two pairs. I will say, right, because now in street, the requirement is a conjunction on all pairs. For all pairs, I need to satisfy the condition. So I will ask the first pair, will make sure that I'm visiting S zero infinitely often and the second pair will make sure that I'm visiting S1 infinitely often. So here you can see that the general, I hope you can see uh, that we have a general translation of generalized bookie to street. So if we have here a notebooky but generalized bookie with alpha one up to alpha k, then in the street I will have k pairs each of them taking care of a single set. So these were Rabin and Street. Now let's talk about the parity condition. So parity looks a bit different. Parity uh, colors the state of the automaton. So it maps each state to, we call them colors from zero to K. So we actually have K plus one colors. And what about uh, defining when a run is accepting? So right, we have colors to the states and we have an infinite run, the infinite run traversal states. It is going to visit some of the colors infinitely often and some of the colors uh, only finitely often. And the definition of acceptance, we will say that R is accepting if the minimal color that it visits infinitely often is even. So if and only if, so we will first write the intuition then formalize it, for, formalize it. So if and only if, so the, the intuition is the minimal color that R visits infinitely often is even. Formally, 
we are going to say that the minimal of the set. So here I have all the colors I, such that inf of R, its intersection with alpha in minus one of I is not empty. So what is this set? This is the set of colors that were visited infinitely often. So I want this minimum to be even. And before we continue and digest uh, this definition, uh, in the literature, you will see all kinds of variants. Uh, you may see uh, definitions that refer to the max. You may see definitions that refer, that want it to be odd. You may see definitions that start with one and not with zero. So it's already eight variants. They are uh, all very similar in their properties. We will work uh, with the minimal color uh, being even. And in order to digest it, let's, before we see an example, let's see that parity is really a special case uh, of, uh, of Rabin and Street. So suppose I have a parity condition alpha, and sometimes it is convenient to describe alpha as the set of uh, states that are colored by each color, yes. So alpha i is alpha in min minus one of i. Yes, so this is alpha i. All states that are colored by a certain color. Uh, so suppose I have such an alpha condition, let's see that I can describe parity as a special case of rubbing. Why? If I want the minimum to be uh, even, then it means I can define a condition alpha prime, rubbing, that will be equivalent to this alpha. What will I say? I want the minimal color to be even. So I want, for example, uh, to visit alpha zero infinitely often, and then I'm done, right? If I'm visiting alpha zero infinitely often, then I satisfy the parity condition because the minimal color that is visited infinitely often is even, is zero. What if I visit uh, alpha two infinitely often? I need to visit alpha one only finitely often, and in order to make it minimal, I will also add alpha zero. I can also visit alpha four infinitely often and accept if I visit alpha three, union alpha two, union alpha one, union alpha zero infinitely often. You can see I can take out the even uh, indices here, but I'm leaving them for completeness. So I can continue like that. Yeah, so I can, it depends whether K is even or odd, but you can see uh, the idea of writing parity as Rabin. I can also write parity as strict. Parity is strict. How? I want the minimum to be even. So what does it mean? It means that if I visit alpha one infinitely often, this is not good unless I visit uh, alpha zero infinitely often. Yes, this one says, if alpha one is visited infinitely often, I don't want one to be the minimal index, so I will visit uh, alpha zero infinitely often. And if I visit alpha three infinitely often, I don't want it to be the minimal, then I have to visit infinitely often also alpha zero or alpha one or alpha two. And we continue like that. So this is parity as a special case of a Rabin and Street. The other direction doesn't work. If I have a Rabin condition, I cannot translate it as if yeah, I, we, we will see that we can play with the structure of the automaton, but just a translation a, of the acceptance condition of being a special case of this wouldn't work. A, Last thing we want to say about uh, parity is to see that it is stronger than Buki and Kobuki. Yeah, how can I say Buki is parity? Yes, if I want to visit alpha infinitely often, so I have Buki alpha. How will I translate it 
to parity, so this is the T. I want to give it, it infinitely often. Okay, so I will say that, uh, well, if the minimal uh, is, I started, I see that I started uh, with zero, so I will say just uh, alpha gets a color zero and Q minus alpha gets color one. And this would work, right? Because if I visit alpha infinity often, the minimal color that is going to be visited infinitely often uh, is zero. What about Kobuki? If I have a Kobuki condition alpha, I want to visit it only finitely often. So I want to, what? Wait, I, I will leave it as an exercise. Uh, and this will be uh, the other a buki and kobuki as parity. Uh, now that we have these three conditions, there are three issues uh, we want to, to mention. And each of these issues is a heavy topic. Uh, we can talk about it uh, for uh, several lectures. Uh, we will just survey them. So the one is the issue of expressive power and succinctness. Which is, a, we want to get convinced that indeed a, we got a automata that are not stronger than Buki, but I can translate Rabin Street and Parity a, to Buki, a, but I do gain something. I, I gain succinctness, the automata I need in order to define languages are smaller. So this is one issue. The second issue is how much does it cost to be more succinct? And this is the complexity uh, of decision problems. For example, of deciding whether the language of the automaton is empty. So this is something uh, that requires a different uh, procedure for each of the different uh, uh, acceptance conditions. And we want to see the different complexities. And the third thing is determinization. Determinization and uh, complementation too. Yes, how to go, uh, for example, from a non-deterministic bookie word automaton to a deterministic Rabin word automaton, which will complete the picture, yes, which will show us that the, the picture we do here, we can indeed put a uh, Rabin and street and parity there. So these are uh, three heavy topics and in, in the next lecture, uh, we will say some things about each of them.